are dealing with YouTube, I guess I should probably go ahead and say, spoilers. Okay. <laughs> Read the bar, it says spoiler alert, exclamation point. We haven't had a problem with that yet, but with YouTube, I don't imagine it'll happen soon or not. Yeah, you never know. Okay, the first thing I want to bring up is, um... Russell Pike has a lot of Oscar buzz. Oh, yeah. Like, just from the role alone in the book, before anybody saw the movie, they are like, she is so getting in, if not winning. Um, what I, how I feel about her performance is, um, you'll notice I'm, like, a sucker for doppelganger performances. Yeah. Like, with, um, Jill, just this year, <laughs> uh, we had Jill and Hall in Enemy, and, uh, Jesse Eisenberg in The Double, so they could say in The Pretty One. Um... When an actor can create to Army Hammer in the social network is like that's the, a great one. That's like the the top right there. When one actor can create two totally separate performances in the same movie, I just eat that shit up because I think it's so impressive to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, especially in Ar Army Hammer was the best at it because you can just tell which character he was playing. True. Um, without having to really listen like use context clues or anything you could just tell by the way he was behaving and all that um obviously that's not exactly the way rosamund pike's performance is but she pretty much was playing more than one character in this movie yeah definitely um because that's the thing um when i was reading the book there uh for a while I had trouble getting into it because the book is from the perspective of, um, well, half the book is, pers it goes back and forth. It's half from the perspective of what's going on with Nick and then from the perspective of Amy's journal entries. And while reading the Amy parts, I was thinking, oh, okay, this is, she seems a little too perfect. This isn't exactly a, it doesn't feel exactly like a, fleshed out character she seems just like a very you know unrealistically perfect woman stepford wife yeah so needless to say when that twist happened i was just like of course yeah <laughs> so that's why it was like that okay so i went from thinking um oh my god really <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> with one reveal <laughs> so um yes um so, this performance is totally insane, and I love her in it. Oh, totally. And it's definitely going to be, like, her... People, especially people in the UK, really knew her. Mm -hmm. But I think she was in, like, what was it, Die Another Day? She had, like, one scene in. Um, I think she's going to be huge now. I agree. And just, like, just, just this year, uh, The Long Way Down, where she, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, was the uh, bitchy um, talk show host... <laughs> Um, she was really great in that one thing, and how she was able to, yeah, just do that. Like I said, you could almost compare it to the characters where they ba they literally played two different characters. Yeah. You could basically compare her performance to that. <laughs> um, and it's brilliant. Um, I should probably mention this as a book reader. Everybody's already talked about it by now, I'm sure, but since... This has been a lot about, you know, book versus movie thing. I'll go ahead and mention it. Yeah. Um, the whole thing where, um, J I've heard her name said Jillian Ann Gillian. It feels better to say Jillian when it's a woman, but I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Jillian Flynn, the author who also wrote the screenplay, went on record saying she was going to change the ending so that both book readers and non-book readers could be surprised. Mm -hmm. Um... Either it was a really, really, really subtle change, or that was her just throwing everybody off, and book readers were surprised to see that the ending had not really changed. <laughs> that was a surprise in the first place. I guess. So, um... I'm thinking. But yeah, it didn't bother me that the ending didn't really change, because my first thought was, well, the story's pretty good as it is, and that's a pretty wicked ending, um... How could they change the ending and still make it, you know, seem in the flow with the rest of the movie? Because you know, with all the sadistic, deceitful characters in this movie, it's going to have a pretty, um, sleazy, deceitful ending, more or less. Of course. So, um, 
Yeah, I thought that was kind of a nice surprise that they didn't really do anything with that. So, like I said, unless it was really, really fucking subtle and only she really noticed it. Um, or it's something I'm forgetting, even though I just recently read the book, I don't think I forgot anything. Because <laughs> the, the adaptation is really, really faithful. Like, a lot of it's word for word. Um, there's a couple of other scenes to talk about here. Let's talk about, um, a pretty talked about scene. Um... Neil Patrick Harris's death scene is getting a lot of attention. Good God. <laughs> because I've heard it recently described as a work of art, all the way to um, sleazy and unpleasant. So people are having different reactions to it. Because um, that's another thing I think would kind of throw book readers off too, because the way it was described in the book, the way I imagined it was the sex had happened, then they got dressed, and everything was fine. And then once everything seemed okay and they were, like, about to go do something else, uh, she killed him. Mm -hmm. Uh, the killing during sex was a pretty twisted little thing <laughs> to, uh, turn this scene into. One thing missing from this was closer playing in the background. It would have worked really well. An instrumental, of course. Really. Yes. Uh, well, it has a Reznor score. It's the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, and just how we go, and the thing that I really love about that is despite the fact that it's a Fincher movie, and the whole thing kind of has this dark foreboding to it, and the whole thing is just kind of like, you know, you know something bad is lurking in its shadows. Um, and this is the director of, like, Seven and Fight Club. Um, what makes this scene even more jarring is it's so graphic. Yeah. Like, with the whole she cuts his throat, and then just kind of, like, rides around and slams him around on the bed while he's it's spraying all over the both of them and she's just rolling around in it like admiring her work in a really sadistic sexual way um not only that but it's the only violent scene in the movie yeah so it seems just to like so even amidst a violent movie i'd say it's still kind of going to catch you off guard but the fact that it seems to kind of come from out of nowhere, and then there's really no other violence in the movie before or after, I think really adds to the... Um, Effectiveness. Yeah. And it's like a really genius move, too. Because <laughs> in the book, it kind of just like... It's like she just kind of says, you know, he attacked me, I stabbed him. It doesn't really go into the detail of exactly what, ha what we saw. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, there's a whole lot of different ways to see that movie for, um, or that scene for something more than just, like, an exploded gore scene or whatever. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, a De Palma scene. Mm. That is so a De Palma scene. <laughs> uh, I don't think De Palma even would have used that much blood, though. Probably not. <laughs> uh, that was a shitload of blood. <laughs> um... Now, I've never sliced a throat. I don't know <laughs> exactly how bloody it gets, but I imagine that's probably pretty close. I'm sure it probably is. Um, I do kind of like the dilemma that it raised about... Um, the, uh, obviously, she intentionally got pregnant thing. Now, the whole... Obviously, she had intentionally done that with Desi to set him up as if she was raped. Um, and then they were together, but we don't really... They kind of hint that Nick kind of says, wait, we weren't together, but then... The, it's not, the way the scene plays out, we're not really sure. Maybe they did or maybe they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but he basically realizes that this child is going to basically keep him stuck with her. And he has the whole thing where... His, he's basically practically going to be dead to his sister because they know... They know... They even talk to talk about it with Kim Dickens' character. They know that she murdered Desi in cold blood. It was cold blooded, even if it was you know for her own purposes. Yeah. Um, and this is going to be the person he's going to live with forever, who is capable of this. And the whole you know, I think it's Tyler Perry that says, "Just don't piss her off." Mm -hmm. um, I also love his line about how well you've got to be the most fucked up couple I have ever seen. <laughs> Um, and that's his experience, too. It's like his specialty. And the movie basically ends on the note of... They kind of somewhat played these mind games with each other mm -hmm. when they were having a normal marriage. 
Um, but now that they both know who the other is, um, these mind games have so, have much more of a sadistic quality to them, and they're just gonna play them for the rest of their lives. Um, and I just love how sick and twisted that whole concept is. Talking in the shower so nothing can be heard, making sure he strips down completely so he can't be wearing a wire. She covers all bases, for sure. Because naturally, when I heard, even if it's Fincher, who isn't exactly conventional, and it's the, the writer, the author is the screenwriter as well, mm -hmm. I didn't figure, um, you know, with Hollywood involved and everything, when I first heard, well, they're going to change the ending, obviously your go-to thought is, well, Nick will do something clever and get her arrested or something. Um, or kill her. <laughs> and get her, when I was reading the book when I was reading the book I thought that was going to be the ending was he was she was going to show back up he was going to kill her and then really be put on trial for her real murder Nick and Margot would uh, hide the body so it would never be found <laughs> that's what I that's what I assumed the ending would be when I was reading the book was he would go on he would actually be put on trial for really killing her this time <laughs> uh, it'd be just kind of this poetic thing but I really really love this ending oh yeah totally <laughs> um and that child. I can only imagine. <laughs> that's that's a whole other scary story for another day, how that child turns out. Um, and whether it looks like Nick or Desi. <laughs> so, um, well, if it looks like Desi, she probably just killed it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, she will obviously do anything for any purpose, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's... Do you have anything to add? I really, really... Uh, was anticipating this movie. I When I did the half-year video, I was saying this was going to be my most anticipated movie for the year. Even higher than, like, Foxcatcher or Interstellar, but... Go ahead. I was going to talk more about Neil Patrick Harris in this video. Oh, please, continue. When I was talking about how people were kind of giving him a hard time because they think either, you know, he's working with a character or he's miscast. Yeah. Um, what I thought was interesting about the character was... Um, what we learned about Tommy, uh, Scoob McNary's character, mm -hmm. was... He was built up to have raped her and beat her and all that stuff. Yeah. And we learned that that wasn't true. And she set it up the way she set up Desi before she killed him. Um, now, she tells all these stories. I think the book goes a little more into this. And she reveals, like, all the lies and stuff. But the interesting thing about it is she plays up Desi to be this creepy psychopath who, like, you know, stripped off all of his clothes and tried to commit suicide in her dorm room. And Laid in her bed, yeah. <laughs> um... All of that, um, and stalked her and all that, and moved back to his hometown to get closer to her, even though he's still two hours away. Um, but the interesting thing about Desi's character and the way Neil Patrick Harris plays him, you gotta give him credit, um, Desi's still kind of a mystery because even though we, we learned to give Tommy a break because we know for a fact he was set up. Yeah. And we know Desi was set up, but even though we know Desi was set up, he still comes off like the kind of guy that might have possibly done the thing she said that he did anyway. <laughs> so, I found that kind of interesting, where you can kind yeah. of... It makes you wonder about that character and exactly what all he could have done. Because even... You don't really get much of a glimpse of that in the movie, but in the book... Yeah. He's basically made the house a shrine to her. Yeah. Like, all of her favorite things are there before she's there. Like, he was expecting her to eventually show up into his life. <laughs> so, um... And the whole, you know, where he basically says, don't worry, I'm not going to rape you. <laughs> I'll sleep in another bed, don't worry. Yeah, so I found that character really interesting where it's kind of, we know he was set up in one way, but it still seems like he could have possibly gone in that direction if she gave him enough time. But then when she, like, jumps his bones, he seems really, you know, taken aback by it. Yeah. Like, she, like, he almost, she almost has, she quite forces him, really. Basically. So... Yeah, that's a really interesting character to kind of try to look into, but we'll never know now because he's fucking, fucking, fucking dead. He, he, in more ways than one. He, <laughs> it kind of comes off just at first glance, obviously not when you get the full review after you watch the film, but it kind of comes off like Paul Dano in Prisoners, that character somewhat. Yeah, because you were... Um, I thought he was the red herring right away. Because I wasn't watching the trailers. Yeah. And after the first trailer played, after it was over, I turned to you and said, was Neil Patrick Harris in the trailer? And you were like, yeah. And I was like, did they do anything to make him look creepy? It's <laughs> like, did they give him a mustache or anything? No, it just looks like JC. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, yeah. Can we talk about Affleck? Because there's not enough people that are. Affleck's performance here is awesome. Yeah, he's get, uh, he's getting a lot of credit for being perfectly cast. Yes. Like this, when he's he's basically supposed to be like an an arrogant douche and. It's the Clooney role that everybody else likes to talk about. Yeah, I do love the moment when um, he does the what they call, I forget what they call it in the book exactly, but it's basically his douche smile mm -hmm. when he's by the poster. Where like he pays the price dearly with the media because they just once somebody says, hey, smile, and he smiles once, and the smile of him smiling like a douchebag is what gets all over the place. And the selfie with the girl that just shows up out of nowhere. I'll show this to whoever I want to. I'll put it on whatever social media I want to. Jerk. And he walks, he walks away. Like, who was that person? Then it gets on the fake Nancy Grace show. Is like trying to put him under even worse. I, I will say one thing about yeah, this. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't talk about the media satire in the movie. Again yeah, either. please. So that was, that's really all there is to say about it. It's really good at the, just oh, it's the media awesome. satire. Where it's like, you know, they like me. Now they hate me. And they want me dead. Now they love me. And now they want me on the death penalty. So. It's like real life Affleck, actually. Yeah. <laughs> as bad as it is to say. A lot of people don't take to Ben very much, but I mean, obviously I'm a huge Affleck supporter. I wouldn't have called the uh, the Batman a year in advance and if I didn't believe it could have happened. But this movie's amazing. I just, I love it. I think it's perfectly... It's amazing. What? Amazing. It is amazing, yes. Perfectly paced. It's perfectly pla paced. Like, the pacing is amazing for it. I love the way everything... It does not feel its length, for me at least, personally. Mm. I mean, I have issues, everyone knows this, I have issues with kind of nodding off during movies and straight up falling asleep during movies. I'm not going to lie you about that. You were snoring so loud on Annabelle. Uh, yeah, but I don't <laughs> think any of the marks in there really cared. But the thing about it is, um, this movie was at the end of a day with The Equalizer and Walk Among the Tombstones. This was a hardcore movie day anyway. And I was awake through every... A blood-soaked day. A blood-soaked hardcore movie day, and I was awake and during I had it warm to it this morning. So. Yeah. I was awake during every second of this, and like I said, it was my most anticipated movie of the year. It did not not live up to expectations. I thought it was an amazing movie. I mean, it did live up to expectations. I, it's been a long day. I'm sorry. <laughs> it lived up to every expectation I had. When you told me about it, it actually came off better from what the description you gave me. So I actually thought it looked better once I actually saw it on the big screen. And Affleck... I'm telling you, it's just, he's gold. And Affleck and Fincher together, I think it needs to happen more often. I think it'd be great. But yeah, Gone Girl's amazing, so check it out as soon as you can. AJ, any, any last words for the spoiler alert? Uh, I'm pretty sure I'll think of something I forgot later, but until then, <laughs> uh, that's it. Alright, join us for uh, our Academy Awards predictions coming up later this weekend. And brand new verses.